All right, Dr. Scott, thank you so much. I want to uh, thank Chairman Shook as well uh, for this opportunity to tell our story. Uh, this presentation uh, today has Genesis back about during football season. Chairman Shook and I were, uh, we're all college buddies, and we were at a football game talking about enrollment in community colleges uh, nationally and within the state of North Carolina, and he said, you know, what are you doing at Wake Tech to uh, continue to grow during these uh, these times of declining <coughs> enrollments. And so I kind of gave him some of our strategies and said, why don't you come and talk at Innovation Luncheon? And so that's what we're here doing today. So, um, so this is just an agenda I want to talk about a little bit. I want to talk a little bit of history of, of the enrollment process here at Wake Tech. Where have we been and where are we going? Okay, talk about some, of the, and then uh, talk about the strategies that we use to uh, increase our enrollment during the declining market, okay, with lower applications. And I'll show you that as we move forward. Uh, we have to increase applications to fill the funnel. We have to increase our conversion rate. We need to close the loop. But we also had to develop programming to keep students engaged, enrolled, and graduate. And that was critical uh, to, to make sure that we uh, have what we need to continue to build those campuses that Dr. Scott wanted to build. And so we wanted to make sure we had those uh, there. It's a perfect storm. 2007, 2011, we had double digit enrollment in the community college system. Y'all remember those days? They were really good. Uh, we had a modern a motto called Build It and They Will Come. You build a campus and we can fill it up. You're sitting at a Example of that, Dr. Green, and I was fortunate enough to be uh, a colleague of hers here in 2007, and we opened this college up immediately. It was a capacity. Okay, those were the times that were going on. What was going on during that time? As y'all know, we had a great recession. Students, or people that lose their job, they come back to school. So that kind of inflated and helped us grow, as well as the height of the high school graduates. Okay, we, North Carolina graduates were starting to uh, to continue to grow and uh, demographically in the next few years, that's going to start to change. So we need to look around the corner to figure out what we're going to do to make sure that we catch or, capture the adult market and capture as many high school students as we can because that's going to start to go down soon. About 2012, 2018, I went to my boss's office, Dr. German, and I said, hey, apps are going down. Okay. You know, enrollment staying up, apps are going down. We were really worried about that. And so we had two pronged problems. First problem, apps are going down, the funnel was shrinking, but also we were not even, we weren't converting our admitted students. So not only got to get them to do their application, but you got to walk them through and nudge them through to the whole enrollment process. And we got to make sure that we increase that. And so that was, uh, that was what was going on. We had a slippage in our applicant poll. We had increased competition. Southern New Hampshire University, we're seeing ads about that around that time. Western Governor's School started. Um, of course, you had University of Phoenix, you had your other four profits as well as, as the other four year schools. So we had an increase in competition. And that was shrinking our applicant pool, and the economy started rebounding. So we were in a pickle. But I knew that we had to do everything we could to continue to grow. This is an example of what was going on. 2010 11, 33,000 applications went through our office a year. By 13 14, it was down 15% to 28,000. And now, as you can see, based on some of our strategies that we've used, we started to rebound a little bit on our applications. But, um, you know, that was, that was proof right there that we had to do something different. Um, in, we had to grow our application pool and as well as continue to grow our conversion rate. Mm -hmm. What did we do? First step was we uh, contracted with Claris Corporation. That is a marketing and recruiting uh, corporation that would help us look at our markets that we have. But more importantly, look at our untapped markets. Where were our untapped markets? Okay, We weren't hitting everybody. Okay. Where do we have room to grow? We had to increase our conversion rates and um, grow our applicant funnel at the same time. Even though the applicant funnel wasn't growing, 
I could do something about the conversion rate, or I try to at least, and that's what we'll talk about. And then Dr. Scott and Dr. Green asked me to chair a strategic enrollment management team. And uh, in your packet, you have a yellow card that talks about some of our, what we've done here um, since the team has put together. And so uh, we've done some really good things uh, about that, and I'm going to touch on some of those right now. But this team was critical for us to look at things strategically. This is really important. Back in 2007, when Build It and they were coming, all we had to do is throw out an ad. Lori could do an ad. It didn't matter. They were coming regardless. But with the strategic enrollment, you had to be strategic about what market you wanted to tap. Where did you want to see the growth? And, and where was the growth? Okay? So that, you know, you can't just use the, uh, you know, shotgun approach. You had to be very strategic about what you did. So we had members to sit around the table from every area of the college that were stakeholders in enrollment. Curriculum, we had continual ed. Con Ed's a great filter for you to, to convert them over to uh, continuum uh, curriculum students. We had IT, we had marketing, we had uh, the whole team would work together to find out what our recommendations were and what we were gonna do. We had 30 recommendations coming out of the Clarence Report. Okay. She said that we need to focus on, and I agree with her, is that there's three main areas. Increase our, our career and college promise students. There's a lot of potential there. Increase our high school rate, um, and also increase our conversion rate. So those are the three things that we hit on when we first started this strategic enrollment management, as well as other things you see on the card, like a payment plan and things like that. But uh, for, the, for this presentation, I want to talk about those. Also, we talked about high tech and high touch. We have a diverse student body, right? Some of them, they've got four year degrees. They don't need a lot of high touch. They just want to go on their computers and do their thing. A lot of our students need our high, high, uh, our high touch. They don't want to mess with high tech. 75% of our students have put applications in, do it from home. They don't even come in to school. They put their application in, put their transcript in, or take the placement test. It's a 25% that come in that we need to have shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder service. As you can see in that picture right there, one of our admission information specialists is working with that student and the mothers in the, in the background as well. So that was really important to, uh, to give that service. I talked about the competition earlier. There's four profits and then customer service, right? So we had to compete against those guys. So we contacted students via email within two days of the application being processed, okay, and tell them, Dr. Scott, welcome to the college. We're glad to have you're having a class. If you want to take a class, here's your next steps. Um, and then we do point of service surveys. Uh, again, customer service is valued very highly at Wake Tech. Dr. Scott has put that, uh, built that culture here. And uh, so we do point of service contacts to ensure customer service. Again, another, another point. The more we can touch it, the better. <coughs> then we had high touch and on-site admissions. We would go to their high schools and sit down with them and do four years, and then do their applications with them, help them with the placement test, kind of move some of our career exploration to the front end of the process so the students can have a good understanding of what their pathway is going to be. Um, and so that really has helped us to have that high touch in the high schools. And just as important, we uh, create a wonderful partnership with Wake County Public Schools. Every year they come to our <coughs> campus and talk about, and we talk, we give them a, uh, a pony show, you know, to talk about what we do at Wake Tech, we'll educate them about what we do. It's the counselors and the CDCs, the career development camp coordinators, that are on the front lines with these students. So if we can get them to understand that Wake Tech is a great option, then that's what, uh, that's what we want to do. Proofs in the pudding. 2013 and 14, we enrolled 2,300, 2,352 graduates from Wake County, and last year we did 2,700. Okay, so that's um, so we we have increased. When Dr. Scott came back in 2013, he said, John, we need to we need to increase the percentage of high school students coming to Wake Tech. At the time, it was about 13 percent. It's 24 percent now. And think about that for a second. We live in the highest educate one of the highest educated uh, counties in the country. Four-year schools everywhere around here, and um, so we had to work really hard 
to uh, be, to uh, uh, change that perception about the community colleges for our students to come. And I think that's something that, that we've done a great job, and Dr. Scott particularly, and Lori, and everybody around this room has done a wonderful job with that. But our graduates are increasing. Remember I told you about Claire's came fall, of, this is fall 14, they came and looked at our data. We've increased our, our Korean college promise 276%. Our 17 and younger, we opened up two uh, um, cooperative high schools in the area, and our 18 to 21 has increased. What's decreased? The adult population. Why are we going back to work? Right? You know, that's what, that's the nature of community colleges, with it, what's the relationship with the economy. So um, we, we set out, and we, those are results of what we did here at the college. This is my favorite slide. This is a, is a balance. You need to, every college should try to have that balance and enrollment portfolio. How many of you guys invest and have portfolios in terms of investment? You don't want to put everything in stock today or bonds. You want to diversify. But you want to do that in terms of enrollment as well. You want to have uh, some of your college, you want to increase areas where you have growth. You have potential to grow, and that's what we've done. Um, we still have over 50, almost 50%. Um, between 22 and higher, but we've, uh, we've really got a good balance portfolio here of our students. The reason you want it balanced, you never know when any policies might change or laws from the general assembly might change and kind of derail some of your activities that you're doing at a college. So you want to make sure that you are um, as balanced as possible. Conversion rate. This is closing the loop. Okay, many of our students are just like you when you go looking for a car. You kick the tires, right? They come in and put their application in. They have CFNC week in the state of North Carolina. How many of those high school students are just putting the application in to wait tech? Who might, might not even want to come? So closing the conversion or closing the loop is converting those students. They might put their application in, but they might not take the placement test. They might be admitted 